Only 58% of people are happy with their current salary, according to a recent survey. But having the skills to negotiate a pay increase takes practice and confidence. To help you with your negotiation, we're going to be breaking down the process and sharing some essential tips. Let's go. One of the biggest things stopping people from negotiating a higher salary is believing that they have no bargaining power, but in most cases, they actually do. If you've been with a company for a minimum of two years, you have power. Think of it this way. The amount of time and money it took to train you and all of those mistakes you made early on that you won't be making now. After all of that, you should be proficient at your job and very self-reliant. If they started that process all over again, that means months and months of searching. And when they do eventually hire someone, repeating that entire process, giving them enough time to adjust and learn, which again costs the company money and lost productivity and efficiency. Now that you know you have value, what do you do? Well, the first important step is to do research. So looking at salaries online, looking at job listings, seeing descriptions of what the job requires, even talking to recruiters and other people in the industry so you have a better understanding of what to expect should you get hired. Next is knowing your value. So when you're hired for a job, that means you have a particular set of skills that make you pretty good at what you do, but also it makes the lives of your coworkers significantly easier. Go over your skills, experiences, qualifications, and more to prove to yourself what your value is so you know what you are offering to this company. In the end, it is your job to prove to this hiring team that you are an asset and not a liability. Next, grab a buddy and do as many practice interviews as possible, getting all of your confusion and ums and buts and uhs out of the way then. So when you're in the interview, you're calm, you're cool, you're collected. You've done that question already. You've done that question already. Oh, you know the answer to that, right? It's all easy, it's a singe, and you breeze through the interview just like that. People usually come across nervous when asking for a salary increase, but by doing the practice like we just discussed, you will come across as confident and calm, further proving to the hiring people or your boss why you deserve the salary that you're asking for. Next is having a set number in mind. So when you go into these interviews, don't give a range, give a set number. Because typically when people give a range, oh, you know, between 70 and 80,000 would be cool. You want the 80, they know you want the 80, but because you said between 70 and 80, if they give you anything less than 80, you can't really complain because you gave them the range to work with. Also, when you give a set number, it gives the impression that you're confident and that you know that you can get this number elsewhere. But keep in mind, just randomly saying a number with confidence will not get you far. If the market says that you're valued at $85,000 for your job and you say 100,000, they know you're just being stupid. So do your research and figure out what number actually makes sense. When picking your number, in reality, you need to choose two numbers. One is your ideal number, which if your boss immediately agrees to, that's fantastic, that's great. And your settle number. Your settle number means it's a little bit less than your ideal number, but it's more than your current salary. So even if you're, you and your boss agree on that number, you're better off at the end of the day. Next is having leverage, which can be very big in these situations. So if you're currently at a job and asking for a raise, it's in your best interest to be applying for jobs elsewhere and have some job offers lined up. This will do a few things. One, it will help your body confidence, right? When you go into this meeting, you won't be nervous because you have a plan B lined up should your boss say no. Also, it gives you a number to work with. When these job offers come in and they give you a set number and it's more than what you have, you can confidently go into this interview being saying, hey boss, I know I can get this number for my job. Giving him a subtle hint saying, hey, you know, if you don't give me this raise, I can always go elsewhere where my talents are more wanted. And it might make more sense for your boss just to give you the extra five, ten thousand $10,000 instead of going through the entire hiring process again and the training and all of that just to fill your position. So you have options when it comes to this situation. Now, if you're applying for a job, again, it's in your best interest to have a few job offers lined up when going into a meeting. So when you go talk to the hiring team, you can be like, hey, just wanted to let you know, this is one of many offers that I'm currently considering. This is a sign of respect, letting the hiring team know what, what's currently happening. And also if you don't, it's kind of awkward if you just randomly drop off the face of the earth, you might get a bad rap at that specific location. But also by doing this, you give your hiring team a little kick in the pants, letting them know that they're not the only one interested in you. And since they've spent all this time and money trying to hire you during this application process, if they really want you, then maybe that extra $5,000 might be worth it in the end. Timing these conversations is equally important. 
Now, in most cases, it's best to do it at a performance review at the beginning or the end of the year. Your employer is expecting these kinds of conversations at these meetings, and you can actually use your performance as further proof of why you deserve the salary that you're asking for. Also, if you're in the job offer process, it's best not to bring it up unless it happens naturally in the flow of the conversation, right? If it naturally comes up, talk about it, but don't bring it up at any point early in the conversation because even though money is a big important factor in you choosing this job, you don't wanna give off the impression that's the only thing you're considering. When negotiating your salary, you need to be confident and polite. You've done your research, you know your numbers, and you know the facts, so you're in a very good position to get what you want. Do not be aggressive and do not be pushy because even if you're right and you are those things, your boss could say no because you pissed them off. Also, job loyalty, unfortunately, is a thing of the past. It's in your best interest to switch jobs every 18 months to three years to significantly increase your salary because outside hires actually make more on average than internal hires. So good luck, I'm Evan, and thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.